I, Lord, bless their giving. Hallelujah. Bless them, Lord, for pure hearts is giving because they want to, and no one's putting their arm behind their back. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, I want to talk, I was going to talk, um, he, of course, along the lines of what I've been speaking on Hebrews chapter 6, along the, the basic foundations of Christianity, and then it's like, I remembered, remember you read in Jesus' ministry, he was going one way, and he, he, had, a, he had a purpose, he had a mission, and then all these people would say, hey, pray for my son, pray for my daughter, hey, and then the woman with the issue of blood, and so he had all these distractions coming in, but they were of God. And it's like God said, take this detour and meet this person. Go, don't go to the feast, go to the pool of Bethesda and meet this person who's been sick for 38 years and, and heal them. See, that's how the Spirit was leading. And today I feel like the Lord's taken a sidetrack while we have a good foundation of what we're speaking on the, the, the basics of Christianity, faith towards God, uh, eternal judgment, uh, baptisms laying on the hands, and the six there that, uh, that is our basic foundation but I felt like the Lord was, was really leading as I was praying in the Spirit yesterday. Talk about joy. Talk about the kingdom. And so there's much need for the joy of the Lord. Uh, Romans 14, 17. I learned a lot of this from Mark Hankins. And I learned a lot of this just uh, even from uh, Joe Jordan and my grandfather. Uh, Romans fourteen seventeen says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, so it's not in the natural, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Joy is one-third of the kingdom of God. And we need it. But is that joy that is not based off a human emotion? It's a joy that is, as I said before, a spiritual force. It's built up inside you. It is your strength that God gives you. Nehemiah 8.10 says, For the joy of the Lord is what? Our strength. Hallelujah. It is a spiritual force that gives you the strength to what? Be a Christian? To, to stand in darkness, to do what the Lord has told you to do. You even read in Psalms, which I'll get in a little bit, that the Lord sits in the heavens and laughs. What, laughs at the people coming against Him? Laughs at the problems? But He also laughs because He's very joyful. And I learned it this way. Uh, Kenneth Hagin said one time, if I'm going through the valley, I don't know it. I'm that eagle that's just flying over everything. Just flying over the storm. And I think, you know, even in the prison cells when they were worshiping God and God moved in and set them free, that the joy of the Lord will make provision, the habitation. When you give the sacrifice of praise and worship Him, it creates a throne for God to sit down in your situation. The habitation of the Lord. What are you talking about? Well, Psalms 91, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High and makes their lodge, their abode, their habitation with compassion, with God Himself shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You can be going through the dark valley and be that eagle that soars o above it. You can be that eagle, or you can be that turkey. You know what I mean? You just, you're just hobbling along, jumping on every rock, jumping on every cliff, or be that billy goat that you have to climb everything. But when the strength of the Lord comes upon you, when His joy, that spiritual force, whether, you, uh, whether you're laughing or not, it's there and it sustains you and helps you fly over that valley. Amen? 1 Peter chapter 1, you're going to see the joy in action and the purpose of it. And, and we need it. We need it in our lives. And sometimes, you know, you have to, as I said, stir yourself up. Make yourself laugh if you have to do it in faith. Look in the mirror when, when you look mad and just go, ha, ha, ha. 1 <laughs> Peter uh, let's see, I want to do in verse 8, but let me back up here. We'll start in verse 7. First Peter 1 Peter 1.7, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire. So you're going to go through a trying. If what, what does faith do? It re just receives the goodness of God. Might be found into praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, you love, and whom though now you see not, you believe, with, and you rejoice with what joy unspeakable and full of glory. This is full of glory. This is part of the glory of God. When you're joyful in your spirit, it, it shows about you. It has the glory of God with it. It's full of God's glory. And so, the joy if joy is one-third of the kingdom, righteousness, well, first we've got to have righteousness before we can have peace. Romans 14, 17. Why? Hebrews 7 and Hebrews chapter 8 talks about how that the blood of Jesus has purged us from dead works which come against our conscience. Our conscience is clean. 
We have righteousness with God. So first comes righteousness, a right standing with Him. And then what comes? Peace. There's peace. You just receive. You're peaceful. There's no, like, you, like, like you're trying, I've heard testimonies of people who says, when I came to Jesus, I just relaxed. It felt like I had been brawling my whole life. I had been fighting my whole life. And then the peace of God came on me. Righteousness. And then when there's righteousness, there's peace. Right standing with God. The peace of God. The Prince of Peace is ruling your heart. And then joy. You need the joy of the Lord. These three elements make up the kingdom of God. Righteousness, peace, and joy. If you just had righteousness, if people would just receive that they're righteous, they'd be doing a lot better off. But then there comes peace. And you need that peace that passes all understanding. Why? Because you know your God's going to take care of you. Matthew chapter 6, He'll provide for all your needs when you're pursuing the kingdom of God. Righteousness, peace. But then there's joy. There's the joy of the Lord. And it says in the Holy Ghost, praise God, you are baptized in joy. John chapter 16, hallelujah. Actually, chapter 16 and 17, but we'll start with chapter 16 here. John chapter 16, and we'll start in verse 19. John 16, 19. And Jesus knew that they wanted to ask Him and said unto Him, Why do you inquire among yourselves of that I said a little while, and yet you will not see Me, and again a little while, and you shall see Me? Talking about His death, burial, and resurrection. Verily, verily, I say unto you that ye shall weep and be laminate, and the world shall rejoice, but you shall have sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be what? Turned into joy. He talks about a woman giving birth, how she goes through great pain, and then when the child is there, the pain is remembered no more. Verse 22, And ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. Verse 24, Hereunto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask and receive that your joy may be full. Answer prayer brings joy. Revelation of the Father brings joy. This is what Jesus showed the people, or showed His disciples and the ones following Him. Ask the Father in My name that you may receive and that your joy may be full. 1 John chapter 1, I believe it's in verse 3 or 4, talks about, hey, we've seen the Father. We know Him. We know what He's like. And we've told you of Him. And that way your joy, as well as ours, can be full. Are you in fullness of joy? Joy comes from personal relationship and revelation. You spend, some, with some, you, know, you spend time with someone you like. You're, you're, you know, you're happy around them. You're even joyful. And they get you know, closer. It becomes an intimate relationship that there's only so far you can go. But with, you know, you're, you're face-to-face with that person. But the Lord takes it past the flesh where He goes down to the center of who you are and stirs the very core of who you are. There's joy. Joy and fullness of joy. Hallelujah. That's what we have today. Fullness of joy. That is our right of the covenant. That is our right of our relationship with God Himself. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hebrews 12. You want to see why? How was was Jesus able to do what He did that no man could do but He? Well, for one, He was prophesied of the Son of God should do what He was meant to do, but also... The way he got his strength, Hebrews 12, verse 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author or the beginning and the finisher of our faith, the perfecter of our faith, or our walk with him, our development in him, for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. He knew the salvation of God's people. He knew the salvation and fulfilling the promise of the Father upon him, the call of God the Father upon him. He knew that call and he was fulfilling it, but it gave him strength to even endure the cross. There's times, I mean, yeah, he went through great pain, no doubt. He suffered more than anyone had ever suffered, but the joy of spiritual force was pressing him forward to endure something so that he might bring us into that fullness. I'll get off into a little bit more teaching, and I believe God's joy will be here. Hallelujah. Ephesians. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. 
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. So who blessed us? God the Father, through Jesus. It was His intention to bless us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as He has chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. Well, therefore, well, there's something right there to rejoice in. God has given us all spiritual blessings in Himself. God did it through His Son. He says, Son, or Word, you're going to take on flesh. I'm going to give you the name above every name. You're going to, be, you're going to take on the sonship of who I am. You're going to go down to the earth. And you're going to restore my creation who I made in my image. And you're going to bring them back up in yourself. That way, what I put in you, all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, are applied to them. Chapter 2, verse 6. And has raised us up together, hallelujah, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So we are seating. He said he sat down at the right hand of God. That's what Jesus did. He sat down after He rose again. He also went down into the deep, our, our hell, or, or the bottom, and then He went up into heaven and represented and sat down on the mercy seat on the right hand of God with us and Himself. But there's more. Hallelujah. Turn to Psalms. Chapter 2. Psalms 2, verse 4. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh, and the Lord shall have them, or in delusion as it was saying. Then you have Psalms 16.11, Thou wilt show me the path of life, and Thy presence is fullness of joy, and at Thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. Who's at the right hand of God? Jesus. He sits in the heavens and laughs. He put us in Himself. We are seated together in heavenly places. There's the joy of the Lord. There's the stirring up. As I said before, compassion is a person. Compassion is is an intimate relationship. It's not based off a human emotion. The stirring up of God's compassion. Jesus was moved with compassion to do the works of God. Jesus was moved with compassion to reveal the Father. And healings preceded this. He healed them because He had compassion on them. But His joy was full. And what happened? After the disciples were very sorrowful and Jesus appeared to them. He said, you'll have joy which the world cannot take away. What God gives you, the world cannot take away. Unless you give it up. But don't give it up. He says, well, I worked the Word, and it didn't work. I believed in healing, and it didn't work. No, the Word tried you, and you didn't work. The Word always works. The Word will bring bring it forth, the healing, the manifestation, the joy. Amen? It purifies us. The Word of God washes us with water, the renewing, the washing of the Word of God. Matthew chapter 3 talks about how Jesus baptizes us in the Holy Spirit and He has the fan in His hand and He's purging the threshing floor. He's fanning the flame of purification in us. There is holiness in us because of Jesus. There is joy in us because of Jesus. There is the fullness of joy. And you just got to say sometimes when, ha, 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 Lord, I just receive by faith right now. Amen? You just got to do that. I was praying, going from here to Ironwood. I was just praying in the Spirit. And it went off into uh, different dialects of tongues, and then I just started laughing. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> the Lord, what are you? Ha, ha, ha. Okay. <laughs> and that's what was happening. I remember Kenneth Hagin's story. I love Kenneth Hagin. I love Kenneth Copeland's stories. When uh, he got up to, to minister, and all of a sudden the spirit of prophecy came over him, and he said, we're going to start a school. And he got down and his wife was like, you said we're going to start a school. He said, I did? I guess we're starting a school. <laughs> but during that time, his son who would become the pastor and, and him that would help uh, lead it, 
He said, the devil would talk to me in my mind as I was driving a rickety old car. I'm supposed to be building a school. I'm supposed to be doing this. And he said, that car would make clunking sounds. And it's like the devil made his own music with the clunking sounds. You're going to fail. And it would match with the rhythm of the clunking. Well, what, what legacy does he have now? They call him the father of our modern day faith. Praise God. And well, what does Ephesians say? That he gives to you exceedingly, abundantly above all that you ever ask or begin to think, but you have not because you ask not. There's no joy because you don't ask. But if you ask, you receive in the fullness of it. What did James say to the people? This is during great persecution. The churches are writing to James. He says, well, you know, Jesus is gone. Paul's gone. He got beheaded by the emperor Nero. You know, the, these apostles... Now it's you, you're left, you're the pastor in Jerusalem, you're the half-brother of Jesus. If anyone knew what he would say, what would he say? You know, in James' great wisdom, he says, did you ask God? James 1.5. He says, we're being eaten by lions here. He says, have you asked God for wisdom? Why? That your joy may be full. It's that simple. What, was I, what did I preach last week? It's so simple. The Bible is so simple, we complicate it. If it's, if, you know, if it's fixed, if it's not broken, don't fix it. <laughs> you just got to laugh. You just got to stir yourself up. It's already there. You just got to spend the intimate relationship time with compassion himself. He what? It's already there. He said, I'm seated. I put you in heavenly places. I put you, you know, above in me the foundations of the earth. And you get this revelation that Paul had of the Father... This is what caused him to write three-fourths of the New Testament and go through the hell that he went through to bring the Word of God with revelation and power. Hallelujah. This is your strength. Praise God. This is a strength that the world cannot take away. This is what brings the glory of God. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And it's full, according to 1 Peter chapter 1, it is full of glory. And so we, you know, we look at these things says, yeah, but, no, 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 yeah, but. Leave the but out of there. Just say, yeah, that's what you say. Thank you, Lord, I receive. (laughs) Romans 5 talks about verse 9. Much more than being justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath. Praise God, there's a place to rejoice. For then if we were enemies, we were reconciled, brought near to God by the death of His Son, How much more being reconciled shall we be saved by His life? Not only so, but we also joy, praise God, in God through who our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. I mean, that people get saved, it's like you come out of a black and white uh, lifestyle into full color. You're seeing life that you had not seen before. And some people say, well, that's the joy of a new convert. Well, do you ever lose it? No. It was never meant to be lost. It was meant to be built upon and exercised and used. You know, you're so loving and compassionate, you don't want to step on an ant. Well, now I can... can, (laughs) Now I can take a flamethrower to the ant hills and still be in the joy of the Lord. (laughs) I already got on that one. But Galatians 5 talks about the fruits of the Spirit in verse 22. What's the first one? Love. What's the second one? Joy. Love and joy. That is who we are, new creatures in Christ Jesus, partaking of the new life. Love and joy. Praise God. If you just had those two, which I don't think you can just take them and say, hey, this is a package deal. You don't just buy one. You buy all these fruits. How much does it cost? It's free. You accept it. Well, do we got to change my life? I said, well, when you taste of these fruits, you're not going to want to eat of anything else. I'll put it to you that way. You don't want to go anywhere else. You know, you go to the best place, the best supermarket, and you go in there, how much does this cost me? It's free. Why would I want to go to some convenience store that wants to do highway robbery? And so God gives us abundantly these things to enjoy. 1 John, as I said, chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, that which we have seen and heard, so they knew the Father. They seen Him. They had revelation. Declare we unto you that you also may have what fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. John 17. 
Hallelujah. Your joy. Glory to God. John 17. I'm going to start in verse 12. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. This is Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane before, and this is why he was feeling the great temptation. This is before he went to the cross and knew uh, what would come before him. Uh, None is lost but the son of perdition that the scriptures might be filled. Now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. And he talks about how I've given them the word, I've given them myself. And he talks about in verse 23, I in them and thou in me, that thou may be perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and thou hast loved them as thou hast loved me. I talked on Thursday. You can keep the law. This could be a dead letter to you, or it could be the Spirit of Christ which gives life. You could be that person waving that lantern with no flame in it, or you can have the flame put in that lantern, and when the joy is upon you, people are going to look at you. What's different about you? Jesus. Where's the joy of the Lord? He, he shouldn't, well, I got the joy of the Lord. Your face is all slooped down, eyes sunken in. And it, no, no, it, it'll bring life to you from the inside out. Amen? Hallelujah. This is what makes you smile when you shouldn't be smiling as the eagle soars above the valley. Well, they soar above the storm. Jesus was in, in the boat while the storm was raging. What was he doing? He had the peace of God. Just sleeping. That's pretty peaceful. Just asleep on the pillow. And they came unto him. He says, don't you care if we die? So, you have little faith. And he rebuked the storm. Well, he knew his father. He knew who he was. Great faith comes from a great relationship with God. Building upon that. See how easy this is? But when I, when I first rededicated my life, I was intimidated by the Bible. I was like, you know, I, want, I feel your presence. I, I want to, but what do I do? Where do I start? You know what he said to me? Just read. Just read. And he said that. And I read, and he started connecting the dots. And I saw that picture. You know, you take that little, that little kid's book, and you have the dots. Hey, draw this out. And most of the time, it's already, you basically tell what it is. And then I was looking at it, and I was like, I don't see any picture. Where's the dots? And he says, I will connect it. And verses started connecting with verses. God started speaking to me. I started becoming more familiar with his voice. And I started being led by the Spirit, but I was being conscious of it. I was like, oh, this is cool. I'm being led by God's Spirit. I started falling in love with his presence. I started recognizing it. An act of obedience. It's so simple to come into him. It's so simple to receive from him. It's so simple to have compassion and the joy of the Lord. If this is lacking... You're missing one-third of the kingdom. You need it. Because why? We are an ambassadors for Christ. We make God look attractive. And at the same time, Paul said, I beg you on God's behalf, be reconciled to God. I've done that on the streets. I've asked him. And, like, eh. and then I had to say, I beg you, come to Jesus. Okay. And they get saved. And it's not with persuasive words but I could sit up here preaching and make mistakes and the anointing be on me. Because of my relationship. I minister from my personal relationship. You do too. Your life becomes easier through your personal relationship. The joy and the strength is there making you strong in His power and His might through relationship. You know, just like anyone working out. You work out in weakness when you're tired because you have a job, but you, you do something and you sow in strength. I read the Word, I build my relationship, and I don't know what this is talking about, but I believe God is going to reveal this to me. What do you do when you get before the Word? Reveal the Father, Lord. Show me the Father. And then it's revealed to you. Oh man, when revelation comes forth, it's like, oh, hallelujah. That's when life is getting imparted to you. This is more than just you know words in a book. Some people, that's all they know. Words in a book. A dead letter. Let me, let me preach to you conviction, right and wrong. Let me point the finger at you. But you know, the great revelation is, i got to preach mercy and truth who is Christ Jesus who came in. He said, mercy and truth. 
For the law was given by Moses, but mercy and truth came by Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit will convict the world of sin. You know, before when I first started, I didn't quite catch that on. I says, do I go to my sister, to, to, my, to the room next to me, and, and yell at her, tell her she's going to hell? <laughs> first, don't do that. Uh, no, it was compassion that was leading me, praying for her. And then there's times I wanted to go up to her and, t- and talk to her and say something, and it was just like, I would shut my mouth. And I would just smile. Okay. <laughs> And then move on. Our job, God has made it easy. First off, you're a messenger. If they don't receive the message, they don't receive the message. That's not between you. That's between them and the Holy Spirit. You do what God has told you to do. You you show the world love. You show the world compassion. You show the world that you're different, holy, separate. And you show them the joy of the Lord. Why? By living it. They can see the fruit on the tree. Amen? Amen? And no fruit eats of itself. It partakes of the water in the roots and produces fruit. Psalms chapter 1. We are that tree connected by the rivers of living water. Praise God. God has put that water in John chapter 4, that well inside of us, and then that stream that flows out of us in John chapter 16, out of our bellies, to produce fruit and an outward expression that God is in us. And really, you know you're doing it when people come up to you and say, man, you're, you're glowing. I haven't said anything. I was just going to buy some bread at Walmart. Praise God. So what do you do? Stir yourself up. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, Jesus. Ha, ha, ha. You just say that. There you go. Ha, ha, ha. Well, that sounds silly. It's not when you get it. <laughs> Proverbs 15.23 says, A man hath joy by the measure of his mouth, and a word spoken in due season. How good is it? Faith comes by hearing, 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 and hearing by the Word of God. What? You're at the Master's feet. You're at the feet of Jesus. He's teaching you. He's training you. Showing you the Father. You begin to understand how important your words are, and how important it is to submit to what you have already received by faith, the joy of the Lord. This is why we keep our mouth shut when we're wrong and we get angry in the flesh. This is why we keep our mouth shut when another minister does us wrong. Or if I would go to another church and they don't give me an offering, even though I knew my offering came in. No, shut your mouth. Smile. Be like your relatives that you go to the family reunion. Just smile. (laughs) And just, I'm not going to say lie, but just say, hey, it is so good to see you. And just hug them and kiss them, and you might not see them for another 10 years, but uh, you smile anyway, praise God. And I, I know, speaking from experience, the ones closest to you tend to hurt you the more. That's why you've got to smile and love them. Smile and love them. It's no great mystery. Our transformation, I'll put it, we should be growing from faith to faith. And even in, in the book of Thessalonians, when he was talking, writing to the church of Thessalonica, Paul says your faith grows exceedingly. So you can have increasing faith, exceedingly increasing faith. Why? How hard do you press in? As I said before, God's invitation to the deep things of God are just that, an invitation. You may get saved and sit at the shallow end. God's not, he says, it's not a commandment to come close to me, but I want you to. Let me draw you into the deep pools of my love. And then God, by His mercy and grace, will throw a tidal wave towards them to let them experience the deep things of God. But if you're there, you don't have to wait for it. God draws us unto the deep parts. You know, His pool has no limit. This is what we're ever increasing in, ever, ever going to. This is why I can read the same book over and over, and God will just keep increasing my love, my faith for Him. I see something new, but I experience Him face to face. This is when old things fall off for me, old habits. You know, addictions aren't anything if they're crucified. There's, there's awesome testimonies of people. I remember I was uh, at this job at Convergis, and I did not wait on the Lord to take this job. I did not ask the Lord if He wanted me to have this job. 
I said, oh yeah, a dollar more an hour, I'm going to leave this job, which I've been working for almost two years, just so I can get a dollar more an hour. It was a big mistake. It was, a t it was basically kind of a teleprompter. They would call me, and then I would help them financially with like 990 forms and stuff like that for their small businesses. I hated that job with a passion. But I was there, and one of the ladies, one of the black ladies, she had, uh, she had went to Rama. She had gotten saved, she, so we, were, we had some things to talk about in the common. And she was talking about how her sister got delivered from drugs. She said, my sister used to be addicted to drugs. You know, we had people pray for her. We had, we, she had everyone pray for her. She was still, she was sitting in the hospital. And one day she said, I, she just got tired. She says, no, I'm getting up right now. I'm free from this addiction. In the name of Jesus. And she got up. What did she do? Just received it. Just fell off of her. Isn't it amazing how simple that is? What does God do when we're spending time with Him? The doubt begins to leave us. Our mind, the spirit of our mind gets renewed. And you see the whole time, I just take it and believe. I just receive. Ha, ha, ha. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Ha, ha, ha. I say that, the joy of the Lord comes on me. God gives wisdom. He sits in the heavens and laughs. Why? Because He knows the end result. He knows what's going to happen. And He says, why don't you come up here and sit with My Son next to Me at the right hand of God where I have given all good things, I have given all pleasures, and why don't you sit in the heavens and laugh with Me? Amen? Ha ha ha. Well, when something happens to you, you laugh as well. You laugh as well. Hallelujah. And I leave it to the Lord to do correction. And I understand in the natural, if things are given to me, I may have to correct. This is, uh, I've seen this issue with ministers trying to correct other people that are even on TV. It seems like all they ever talk about is another person's ministry and coming against their name and coming against them. Who are you to correct another man's servant? They may be wrong, but we will correct what we do. How do we correct that? How do we protect from that? Right teaching. Right preaching. Don't come against the person. You read John's Gospel. What's the simplest of all things? He says, uh, if you walk in the light as He is in the light, then we love one another. If you hate your brother without a cause, you walk in darkness. And I see that a lot. You know, They come against... So, well, what, what about Joel Osteen? What about Kenneth Hagin? What about all these things? Well, first off, all you see is a few minutes on YouTube or a few things that you don't know the whole extent here. You're, you're judging a man and you're coming against a person and you're walking in darkness. I'll leave that up to the Lord to judge. But Paul corrected his church because they, were, they belonged to him. He started it. It was his responsibility. That's why he corrected those. That's why you see correction in First and Second Timothy, first in the church of Thessalonica. That's why you see him writing to Timothy. He says, when you're correcting an elder or someone above you, treat them as a father. All things are done in love. And I've learned that, you know, just being here in the, in the year, three months that I've been here, uh, with Pastor Tom, I mean, only two months I've been here, is how merciful God is. How much mercy He has. I've seen that on my grandfather. How many, just realizing, spending time with him, how many ministers he kept in prayer? He held in prayer and stopped them from falling. That was the Father's heart. And God wants to do the same. This is where your joy is restored. Because oftentimes we make mistakes and we judge ourselves, but then the shame, what does shame do? It produces a lifestyle of repeating the same thing. And God wants to remove shame and bring you joy. The joy of the Lord. He wants to bring you so close to Him. Like, I, don't, I don't want to do anything else. I just want to love the world like you did. And you think about it. How many times could Jesus have judged? Especially, you know, the woman caught in the act of adultery. Where are your accusers? None, Lord. There's none left to accuse me. Neither do I. And they could have had every right to, writing on the ground, ignored the accusers. 
says, well, this is extreme grace. What about judgment? Yes, there is eternal judgment according to Hebrews 6, 1 and 2. But what do we do? We bring them to understand, hey, there's a hell. Hey, yes, there's a hell. There's a bad place. But you know why? Because those who reject the mercies of God, there's nothing left. There's nothing left. God's mercies, God's joy is there for you to receive and be delivered from a dark place because He died for you. Hell is real, but the joy of the Lord and salvation is far better. All you've got to do is put your differences aside and receive. There's true faith. I just received. Remember the story of Martin Luther? Remember how he came from the Catholic Church? How he had to do penance? Repent, repent. Hail Marys, Hail Marys. Kiss the little silver cross on the steps. Keep kissing that thing. And maybe you'll be good enough for God to send His presence. But then he got the revelation. Righteousness by faith, one of the third of the kingdom of God. Righteousness, peace, and joy. You mean I'm righteous because I just simply receive from God? Yeah. (laughs) This is where your joy comes in. This is what makes you happy. All the wrong that one could do, and then you find out by a changed mind, by a renewed mind, according to Romans chapter 12, renewed in the spirit of your mind, now you're seeing the way God sees you. So what's stopping us? Us. The devil can't destroy you. He has to get you to do it. You press the self-destruct button. It's flashing there in front of you and he's making it sound so good. Here's your escape. Why don't you get in the flesh a little bit and keep pressing that button there, self-destruct. He said, no. Trust, trust in the Lord. Nehemiah 8.10 talks about the joy of the Lord is our strength. Let's practice that, amen? Let's, get a little, let's just abandon our reasoning for a moment and quit trying to figure things out. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, Lord. Say that with me as goofy as it sounds. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. I'll give you uh, one more here. John 15, 8 through 11. John chapter 15. Eight through eleven. Herein is my Father glorified. Well, that's interesting. Actually, let's start in verse seven. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, relationship, stay in me, make your abode, and my words will abide in you. You shall ask what you will, and it shall be done to you. Remember, you have not, but you ask not. But He wants you to ask. Verse eight. Herein is my Father glorified. How is He glorified? That you bear much fruit. Prosperous. You know what the things of darkness are? The unfruitful works of darkness. You know what hell is? A throwing away of trash, a complete and utter waste of what someone's life could have been. That's what you sense in hell, the loneliness and the potential you had, trapped and separated from everything else, with no knowledge or strength of God because it was taken from you, and all you know is your life was a complete waste forever and ever. The unfruitful works of darkness. And here God is saying, let me, this, you want to glorify me? Be fruitful. Be prosperous. Hallelujah. So shall you be my disciples. Verse 9. As the Father has loved me, so have I have loved you. Continue in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. You just get overwhelmed. When I'm in the presence of the Lord, I'm praying. You know, It's not His intense power that I feel, but it's His intense compassion where I get down and I just, I just start weeping. I feel overwhelmed by His love. I feel overwhelmed by His compassion. This is what brings tears to my eyes. It's because it's, it's in there. It's a relationship that grips you right here and renews all good things brought to you by the Father. He's imparting to you. It's love becoming you. That's the intense presence of the Lord. There's, there's times when joy, you, you get up and you dance. And there's times when it grips you. That's what I feel most of the time is God's love and compassion just gripping your heart. It's like He's embracing you. It's like He's hugging you. And it's that intense hug. 
that closeness, that drawing to himself. Hallelujah. Depression leaves. Anxiety leaves. Self-consciousness leaves. Who you thought, you know, I'm not good enough. Read Psalms. I believe it's in the chapter 130, verse 38. He will perfect that which concerns me. Philippians 1.6 He which started a good work in, in me will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. He doesn't leave you comfortless. He doesn't leave you orphans. He brings you into Himself and continues the work in you. And we look back, you know, why do some people grow? Each of us is given a measure of faith. We all start at the same level when we first come to Christ. But some grow so awesomely because they have abandoned all. I'll put it this way. Ever do a study of volcanic soil? It's the richest soil on the earth. Why? It's purified by fire. Purified by intense heat. That's what Jesus does with us. He's taking that fan and He's purifying that soil so you can richly receive the revelation of God's Word. What happens when you, when you plant something in volcanic soil? It grows pretty big. It grows richly. God wants to take the Holy Spirit. God wants to take His love and compassion and purify the soil. God wants your joy to be full. And you say, ha, ha, ha. Thank you, Jesus. (laughs) Hallelujah. (laughs) Glory to God. Well, I want to press on, but I think I'm ending here. Ha, ha, ha. Thank You, Lord Jesus. Lord, we just give You glory. We give You praise. Lord, thank You for Your joy that is full of Your glory, Lord. Thank You for Your manifestation of Yourself and the Spirit of God. Thank You, Lord. In Jesus' name, we receive the fullness of grace. We receive the fullness and the simple faith. We just receive of You, Lord. Don't have to work for it. Don't have to earn it. We just come in and boldly proclaim Your message to the world. That you are light and in you is no darkness at all. No shadow of turning. God wants to give you all good things. God wants to give you all good gifts. God wants to heal what Psalms 103 has read, all your diseases. And all you've got to say is, Lord, I receive it right now. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If any of you online, sounds good to you, ask Jesus into your heart. Lord, forgive me my sins. Come into my heart. You want to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. If you want to know who God is, and you cry out, show me the Father. Many people have, have had, a, had an experience with God because they were searching for Him. And that's what we, as people of God, get an experience, not just, not just something sweet, something nice. He encounters us. Hallelujah. I'll end the online service. Thank you for watching.